What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So today we're going to take a look at the January 11th edition, the debut on Pursuit and Twitch. And I am once again joined by Ro. What's up, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Just getting over this damn cold. It's put me down for about a week. So uh, it's uh, made things a little tough as far as podcasting goes. <laughs> what a way to start the year, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like I, at work... There were only three people who weren't sick this past week, so it was bound to happen. Hopefully it's over by next week and get on with things. Um, first, I want to say to everybody listening that I will be doing my 500 subscriber giveaway. That will be posted on Monday, so you guys will figure out how to join in on the giveaway. I'm giving away a Sammy Callahan autographed 8x10 along with another mystery one, but you guys will have to wait till Monday to check that out. So, what did you think of last night's show? You know what? I thought it was not only a nice season premiere since this is the impact being on a new channel, but actually the fallout for uh, Slammiversary, I think. You mean you know, Homecoming? Gonna... <laughs> Excuse me? Huh? I said you mean Homecoming. You said Slammiversary. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Why didn't I think of Slammiversary? Well, the fallout for Homecoming, I think we could kind of see where some certain storylines are headed. Yeah, and it seemed like everybody kind of had motivation coming out of Homecoming, like the building now toward everything going on with Cross, Cage, and Impact. Like we were unsure of how things were going into the pay per view, and it almost seems like they kind of have a vision of where it's going to head. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's always a thing. And we kind of even seen a little bit, even though it was different participants and different matches. But we've seen uh, the go home show leading up to homecoming that it looked like post uh, homecoming that they had, you know, some plans for different wrestlers. And that's always great. Yeah, no, absolutely. You got to plant the seeds. You know, I mean, you can't just refresh everything as soon as the pay-per-view is done with. Yeah. So I guess totally. we'll uh, start off the show. Johnny Impact comes out, says that the Impact World Title is important to him, but obviously not as important as his wife. Ty has been in the hospital the past few days after what happened at Homecoming with Cross power bombing her into the audience. Cage comes out. He's obviously pissed. He says he's the rightful champion after all the shenanigans that took place. He says he had uh, Johnny pinned for ten seconds. He wants his rematch. He wants it right here and right now. Things get heated between the two of them. Killer Cross comes out. He stirs up the pot like he always does so well. Johnny Super Kid's cage dives over the ropes or through the ropes to take out Killer Cross on the outside. They go at it in the ring. Uh, I think Cage uh, Cross clotheslines Cage. Cage basically gets right up, and then Cross leaves kind of uh, where it's at. Uh, good opening segment. Like I said earlier, I feel like everybody kind of had motivation. Uh, they started off pretty hot. Uh, we see Cage. He was uh, very pissed. Uh, I guess not exactly the way he left homecoming, but I guess, you know, thinking back on everything and everything that happened, I guess he's got a right to be pissed, you know? Yeah, it was funny because, you know, the first and, you know, I don't know if it's because these are taping, you know, obviously they taped the same arena that they had homecoming at but johnny impact got a lot of booze and you can can argue that maybe that had much more to do with the fact how the main event at homecoming ended or maybe people are turning on johnny but what i found funny was cage being so upset only because it's not so much that he got screwed i mean he lost I, i'm well i guess if you want to use the survivor guys um, distracting him it, I guess he has a point of you know had the referee been paying attention he would have got you know he would be uh, the world champion right now and cross pointed out that he got three pins in those 10 right. seconds pretty much um, but I like where this is headed I'm hoping and I know a lot of times it's easy to fantasy book but I'm hoping we get some form of a triple threat match with these three because I think there's a good story here you know where you have Johnny Impact you know, he has beef with C Killer Cross, who, you know, well, tossed his wife into the crowd, we want to say. And then you have Cage, who feels like he should be champion, but kind of got the short end of the stick. So, you know, all three of them, I, I really think they should they, they can do some. So I'm hoping that's where it's leading to. But I guess we just have to see how it all plays out. 
Yeah, and that seems to make the most sense. And, you know, Johnny's just kind of getting himself stuck in a place that he's not going to be able to get himself out of, which could possibly lead to a new champion. And like you said, from the sound of the crowd, it seems like that's what they want. Yeah, and it, it's just so crazy. Um, you know, just my own personal opinion. I don't think he's been a bad champion. I think he's been fine. I mean, I think, too, maybe they could could have pulled the trigger earlier so, and I think they kind of waited too long to finally do it I mean he, he's been fine but I think we're at a point now where people if they do have that match or whatever people either want to see cage champion or killer cross champion and I think you know his next title defense or maybe one more I think we could see a new champion in the foreseeable future yeah and I think part of it is Johnny's just been I don't know bad place bad time I mean like he came back, just randomly got a title shot at Aries. Then everything that happened with Aries at Bound for Glory, that overshadowed his big victory. And then this, the like I said, the shenanigans that went on to the uh, finish of the match at Homecoming, it just seems like it's always been a bad, bad place for Johnny to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't disagree. I mean, and it's unfortunate, too, because I... Excuse me. I thought, you know, once he came on board, he was deserving of it. But I thought it was kind of one of those. Uh, let him get a run real quick and then move forward. And I mean, you know, he's always and we see this with a lot of people. Once they run out of opponents, it seems like their their title reigns get stale. I don't know if we've reached that point with him, but I think it's just more much has much more to do with people wanting to see whether you're a cage fan or a killer cross fan or hell fan of both. You want to see them get a run with the title. Right. I, mean, I think it has a little to do with that, like you had said, that when Johnny came in, we knew he was going to eventually have the title on him. You know, he, he's got some name value to him and former WWE guy. So we knew it was just a matter of time. But like you said, it was surprising that they took this long to pull the trigger. But now they want somebody else like Cross or Cage. Uh, so up next, Johnny is attended to in the back. Cage comes up and wants his rematch. Johnny says, let him take care of Cross tonight, and you get your title shot. Uh, so we have our first, first match of the evening, the Rascals versus the Lucha Brothers. Um, I thought this was overall a very good match. Uh, why this match happened, I don't know. They definitely could have went a route of, you know, the Rascals saying, you, you know, you guys took the champs to the limit. We want to see how where we are. And uh, maybe have a match, you know, just some motivation to kind of get the matches happening. They probably just put this match on because it was definitely an attention grabber. And, you know, with the debut on the new channel and Twitch, you'd have people viewing because of what we saw at Homecoming with the Lucha Brothers and LAX. So this was going to be a good match as well. What would you think of this? Yeah, I thought this was one of these matches where it would have been cool if we had some kind of backstage segment setting setting it up, you know, whether you had the typical Lucha Brothers promo that we get or even with the Rascals probably kind of meeting them backstage and, you know, talking about tonight's match. I think it would have helped a little bit. The match was fine. I mean, it's your typical everyone get their shit in type match, which, yeah. I mean, it works. I think Lucha Brothers, I mean, they've been at this level now, but I think they're they're at this level where, you know, when you want to kind of get the crowd pumped up, you can put them as a first or second match on the show, and it's going to kind of get everybody on their feet. But, yeah, and I mean, as far as the Rascals, they showed, showed me enough where, you know, hopefully they're integrating the tag team title picture down the road. Yeah, and I think that's where they need to go, like you said, down the road. It only makes sense. Uh, Finish saw Pentagon hit a combination gory special package pile driver on Wentz. I think it was Wentz, and he picked up the victory. Obviously, after the match, all four men gave props to each other. So, you know, it was just a show of sportsmanship. Uh, then we had the GWN flashback. It was the first Ultimate X. So on Twitch, I guess if you were not a subscriber, you got normal commercials where the commercials were playing on Pursuit. But if you were a subscriber, they kind of showed some old school TNA GWN footage. So uh, I guess people got to see the Ultimate X in its entirety. Um, interesting take on things. I think, uh, again, much like even when it was broadcast uh, and you saw the Ultimate X and people would just be tuning in. And you'd be like, all right, so am I watching new footage or old footage? I think this confused the crowd a little bit. Um, you didn't watch it on Twitch, right? Nah, and I once I seen it was uh, GWN time, that's when I fast forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
But uh, it seemed like they had about 11,000 viewers as their highest uh, count at one point. So, uh, again, it's a tough slot Friday night. Um, they're changing channels, you know, that's going to obviously play a factor in the, the drop in viewership. But uh, what do you think for a first night on a new station? You know, my biggest takeaway, and I don't know if it's something they'll look at, I mean, without kind of disclosing the format that I was able to watch, there's ways for people to access it. But I wonder if the ways to access Impact now on Fridays, if it's going to be detrimental to whether it's, you know, the pursuit ratings or what they draw on Twitch. Because if people are watching, but they're not watching on pursuit or they're not watching on Twitch, I mean, just say which in Twitch's case, would that be, you know, be a reason why, you know, they decide, hey, you know, maybe we won't do it because it's not bringing in what we anticipate. I think that was just kind of like when I finished watching, I said, cool, you know, I'm going to be able to watch this, be able to watch it earlier like I was before. But then, too, I'm just thinking to myself, I said, well, the whole point of them putting it on Twitch was to give someone, an av- you know, people the avenue to watch when it initially airs. You know, when people were DVRing and people who DVR, that doesn't really factor into the ratings. Yeah, people are watching, but they're not watching when it initially airs. So I guess that was just my thing was, I mean, that's cool what they brought in. I'm sure they anticipated higher, but I wonder if people who are are watching, you know, are they going to be, are is it going to be contributing to, you know, the Twitch viewership or the Pursuit viewership? Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a good question. Um, I think this was the maybe the highest crowd they drew, or did the L, uh, Lucha Underground Impact show? Maybe that drew like fifteen thousand. Um, but regardless, uh, it was very interesting, and uh, this was brought up on the uh, PW Torch uh, review of Homecoming, which you know I'm not going to support what they say because I find myself turning it off very quickly because of the. Uh, the negativity toward the product. But um, anyway, so Josh had brought up the fact that they wanted 15,000 subscribers by, I think they said March. Mm -hmm. Um, Now we were unsure of, you know, how this pursuit TV deal did for impact as far as uh, money wise. And it was said that the pop deal did give them about a million dollars a year, which broke was broken down, give them about $20,000 an episode. So the 15,000 subscribers, you figure it's $5 a person for a year. That's $60 per person. Now you times that by 15,000 subscribers and you have $900,000. Now, I don't know about you guys, but like I said, they brought it up that that they might be trying to use those 15,000 subscribers to get that $900,000 and kind of supplement what they were getting from pop TV. So I'm not, you know, with, the pursuit channel it almost seems like since they have a stake in the ownership it's just kind of like money in the left pocket right pocket deal so this may be part of the reason why they went the twitch route that's an interesting take because i I thought the moment that they put it on twitch you know it just kind of just made the pursuit channel just like hey just an excuse to be on uh, tv if if that makes sense because i figured everybody would watch on twitch but, you know, my, my biggest thing is like this with the whole um, su- subscribing to Twitch and paying the five ninety nine. You know, for those who don't have the Amazon Prime, obviously, you know, you have to ask yourself if you're somebody who's subscribing to that and say you're su- subscribed to the GWN, then what's the GWN for, really? Like, they really, that should be one of the focuses. And I don't want to make it seem like, okay, every time they do one good thing or they need to keep doing more and more and more. But they really got to make uh, make it a reason where that GWN, in, even though seven ninety nine, and I'm not trying to count anyone's pockets, it's not a whole lot of money. But what is it giving you? I mean, you look at the the e network, you know, for you know people bash it here and there, but you can watch old pay per views, you can watch new pay per views. There's so much, and you know that's for nine ninety nine. I mean, the fact that we can't get pay-per-views impact pay-per-views on the gwn and now the gwn's been been around now for two years i mean i'm sure there's more to it than just you know us wondering but 
you know, you would think that'd be something that they could work out that way. Instead of people going to fight or however else or going through the cable provider, you just if you are subscribed, you can just watch it there or watch it at a discounted rate. So, no, you're you're 100 percent right with that. And now we learn that Twitch will not or Impact made it so that Twitch won't have these on video on demand. So your only way to catch prior episodes is to check out the GWN. Um I know you had asked Impact, now how do we catch this if we don't catch the live version? And obviously you did not get an answer. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to you know, rectify the $8 a month with just a past library. And then what, once every couple months you get a one night only special? It, it seems like they need to really uh, push the GWN as, you know, like, like you said, to stream pay-per-views or, you know, some incentive to do maybe only shows that you can get on there. Cause originally we were supposed to see like uh behind the scenes shows and things like that on the Twitch channel. And while we got a little bit of that, you know, it, it hasn't been anything to write home about. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't, you know, I don't get it. I kind of just wonder if it was one of those things cause we got it during uh, Jared's time. If they've kind of just kind of just left it out, it is. And I know they've talked about it in the past that they were going to revamp it, but at the end of the day, and you could even say the same thing with the Twitch, anytime you have a free tier of something and like, just like the GWN has it, there needs to be incentive for somebody to want to subscribe. I mean, with Twitch, I guess the thing is you get it ad free. Now I don't know about you, for, but for me, I mean, yeah, do do the ads get annoying? Sure, but I mean, it's not enough for me. Where it's like I can't watch the show, and you know, when I look at the GWN app, I'm only using that for explosion. So I'm just saying is when you're talking about having somebody to pay, there needs to be some sort of premium and advantage of subscribing compared to somebody getting the free tier where that way the person who is getting the free tier is feeling like man i need to pay that way i I can get more right and i mean the only argument for the whole gwn thing is that they still may be behind some sort of battle with jeff jared because of the whole thing um but i mean impact did go the extra route to line up the commercials with the way they would be on pursuit so it's not like how it was like back when uh I think it was the uh, when they went to the UK for the Twitch special, and the commercials would just come up every couple of minutes. Like the only way to watch it was basically to subscribe. They made it that difficult. So that's how I originally was under the impression the commercials were going to be, but they actually had it lined up. So, uh, so it really wasn't that big of a factor. And I was just reading some reviews of people that had watched it on Pursuit, and apparently they played like the same two commercials the entire time. So it's not like. Uh, a lot of people had bought some ad space there. So, and they were impact commercials. It was no, was no, no. It for, it for was for like socks the- and knives and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, if they really wanted to utilize the commercials for good things, like, I mean, yeah, I get the GWN content, but I mean, you could have used like around the ring segments or stuff like that, or have you know, Alicia and um, what's his name, the guy who does behind the the lights uh he was santino oh, morella oh no i'm sorry uh yeah. anthony corelli Corell. Corell. there you go yeah yeah, yeah. they could have had them talking about something or something like that you know yeah and then you know the last thing i'll add on it is you know this has been well documented by plenty of people what they do with these gwn flashbacks and you know they're inconsistent with it because sometimes they'll just show you know a couple of clips and then they'll tell you you know catch it on the GWN app. But they they'll give us full on matches, mm-hmm. you know, and and it just comes across as just you know a lot of time to fill. Right. But they do it there and they do it on Explosion. Like mm-hmm. pick a show. I mean, if you're gonna do it on Explosion, I guess it probably makes sense to do it on Explosion. But you know, de- uh, dedicate that time on Impact to something else. You could even do like trivia or something like that just like some sort of fan interactive thing you know i mean i don't obviously know what the difficulties are of how they line it up and all that stuff but it just feels like you said you know they could do something else Mm -hmm. all right so let's move on since we're uh, already going off on a tangent here (laughs) all right so uh then we see cross he comments on everything that happened at homecoming he says him and johnny are the same but obviously cross is a little more awful he knew Johnny had something up his sleeve, and he obviously proved him right. Then Cross is interviewed by McKenzie. He says, tonight he's going to liberate Johnny from the skin that he's in, and it's over for John. TikTok. Um, yeah, they're really doing good stuff with the Cross character. 
Um, and, you know, I like that they're kind of going all in on this. I hope they continue with this momentum because like, like we saw at the end of homecoming, it seemed like the crowd was really receptive to killer cross. And, um, like I said, it's a new star they're building. So why not take the chance on them? Yeah, they, uh, you know, hopefully they pull the trigger. I mean, not, I guess not, I don't want to say too fast, but you know, the one thing that I'm hoping for 2019 for Impact is they're able to realize some of the people who are hot at that time and capitalize on it and yeah. not wait too long. But uh, the thing that I love with Killer Cross is how he, you know, he dresses Johnny Impact as John. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they've been kind of slow with him. Like they pushed forward with him hard for a little bit and then pulled back. We didn't have much of him um, with the whole. Uh, Johnny and Aries build up and then all of a sudden you know he kind of since that took place after Bound for Glory it seems like he's been more of in the spotlight so uh, like I said hopefully it uh, continues forward uh, then we have Josh Matthews interviewing Rich Swan. Rich gives you know a victory speech he says he's ready to take on everyone or anyone uh, this brings out Sammy Callahan he wants to set the record straight of what has happened between himself and Rich Swan. he says Rich knows this better than anyone and that it is that family means everything. Sammy hands Swan an OVE shirt, tells him to put this on. Callahan tells him to come home. Willie Mack comes out. Mack battles with Callahan. Rich gets in the middle of him. Refs come, and they kind of break it up. So what do you think of this segment here? First, I was wondering, is Rich Swan from Ohio? I didn't I, catch when they announced announced uh, you know, where he's from. I believe he is. Okay. Well, okay. Then I guess that makes sense because that was my first thing. I'm all like, we, you know, what sense does it make for him to? No, no. He was actually born in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess the storyline, like, whoa, you know, I didn't understand what sense, what sense it made, but hey, it gives him something to do because I mean, I'll be the first to add, I was um, not pleased that they decided to put the exhibition tight on him. I just thought you could have put it on. Someone else. I mean, I think he was one of these guys that you knew eventually he was going to win the X Division title. I just he was a think safe that. bet. Yeah, he, you know, safe bet. But I mean, you know, they found something with him, and we, we, you know, we had talked about this leading up to Homecoming, where you know they have something with Ove and uh, uh, Swan and Willie Mack. So this kind of just adds to it. So. I'm interested to see which route they go with this, whether, you know, does he tea, tease actually, well, I don't want to say tease, but does he end up joining OVE, which would be odd, but interesting, or is it just, you know, just, you know, just uh, Sammy just uh, talking, but as far as the match with uh, Callan, Callan and Sammy, it was good. Um, you could argue, in a sense, it was a little bit better than what they had at homecoming, but uh, Willie Mack picks up the W. Um, I'm sure this feud is far from over. I mean, anything with Sammy Callahan, you know, the one thing with it, Sammy Callahan feuds, they they run, which is good. I, I think sometimes they cut certain feuds off too, far too quick. So um, I'm really interested to see how this story plays out in the end. Yeah, and they didn't give it all away here. We still don't know what's really going on between Swan and Sammy. Um, so that's good. And that's, this is going to continue to build. I, like you said, I thought this match might have been better than their match at homecoming. They had a really good, uh, build to the finish with them training pinfalls back and forth. Um, we did see Sammy hit a pile driver on the uh, top of the entrance ramp or at the stage. Uh, Willie just made it back to the ring before the count of 10. And then, you know, it, it, it was a good match, really solid. These men seem to work well together. And, uh, despite being a rematch that we just saw a couple days ago, it, it was a good job. Um, I mean, they, here's the thing that bothers me a little bit and, you know, it's just such a small gripe, but, uh, you know, they, they had advertised this match from happen for, to happen on this episode and you didn't really need to advertise it. I mean, everything kind of organically happened on the show, you know, it's one of those things where we've taught what well, many fans talk about. Sometimes they advertise too much. I think you do you know, a couple of matches and then even two and we'll get into it. But like when they advertise Tessa, they just say Tessa will be in action. I think that's enough. You don't have to advertise every single match, you know, let some stuff kind of play out and just kind of like what we, we had mentioned earlier about Lucha Brothers and the Rascals, like 
to just have i mean i guess since both are faces you wouldn't set a look how they set it up but i was fine with them where you had willie come out attack callan and then poof a match just starts off of that yeah. like that's some type of story especially given you know the the history that they have so um yeah that's one thing i i, I kind of hope down the road they decide uh, not to advertise every single thing that's going to be on impact that upcoming week yeah, because I mean, people look at it and go, "Man, all right, may, I, I guess I'm, I'll tune in," or you know, I don't want to tune in. You know, I mean, us, we're gonna watch it regardless. So I don't know if this really is a thing to bring in the casual viewers, rather than you know, the mystery of what's gonna happen on the show. But we'll see. Uh, so we have LAX and Conan backstage. Conan admits that he was wrong. He said back in the day he would have done the same. He is proud of them. They are going to celebrate. And then we see LAX and OVE bump into each other backstage, and we find out next week that this match will happen. Again, just a little segment like that, and you have a match from it. Makes sense. You know, I just wonder what's the future with Conan a part of LAX. So I think LAX is showing you that, you know, I don't want to say they've outgrown him, but he's not needed anymore. But then, too, it's kind of like, all right, well, where else would you put Conan? So I, I find myself just wondering you know, what's next, you know, they've, you know, challenged the, you know, the, one of the best tag teams in Lucha Brothers and, you know, they were successful and they did that without Conan's assistance. And right. This was, this was something that used to plague them in the past when Conan wasn't around and, you know, they went on a losing streak, lost the titles, etc. So now that they've been able to show, show that they don't need him, like, I just wonder what's the, what's the future. No, that's, it's a very good point. And, uh, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for any of that. You know, so, I'll, I'll throw I'll throw in this. This is why I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, sorry if I'm fantasy booking today. No, this man, would be a, a great way if they wanted to bring Demont- Diamante back, who I think is still signed, and have Conan assist her. I think that would be a way where, you know, you still can keep him in LAX, but instead of him focusing so much on aiding uh, L- uh um, Santana and Ortiz, he can uh, aid Diamante's quest and become a knockouts champion. Yeah, no, no, I like that. And you could just have them all backstage together, you know, something simple like that. So they're still all together. But yeah, no, a lot of people have been wondering where she is. She pops up on Twitter all the time and just kind of didn't make sense why they didn't bring her back. There's obviously room for her and there's people want to see her. So it, I, I don't get it. But I don't work there. So I don't know. Uh, Exactly what's going on. (laughs) So up next, we have Scarlett. And she comes out to do her strip show. At least that's what we were told by uh, Don and Josh. Um, She says next week she will finally announce the winner of the talent search. She is going to celebrate their debut on Pursuit with, I guess, her strip show. Um, And Impact has promised to be edgier. She does a countdown from five to one. And the Desi Hit Squad comes out. Um, so we are finally getting that talent search winner. Who do you think it's going to be? Well, that's interesting because it's a debut. So I'm guessing it's somebody new. It'd be funny if it's like she just goes full hill on it and it's no one. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, she did decides that nobody was uh, up to her standards. But I don't know, because if you're talking, you know, that she's saying debut. On well, I don't pursuit. know if she just meant that. Impact's debut on Pursuit. I don't know if she necessarily meant a wrestling wrestler debuting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know at this point. I mean, I mean, would it surprise me if it's a debut? I mean, it wouldn't. But, yeah, I, I just really don't know, know at this point. But, um... You know, with the Desi Hit Squad, man, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> once, it, once again, man, I, I, I feel like they're... I, I think Rohit Raju can be salvaged. I mean, I, I've always kind of liked him, and he yeah. really is somebody that they should thrust in the X division. I think he can work. You yeah. know, he, he would fit well. But as a tag team, I think they can't be res- resuscitated. I think they're no. dead. <laughs> All right, so I'll just finish going through the segment, and then we'll talk a little more. Uh, they bring out a chair for Scarlett. Gama says she shouldn't reveal herself here, but to save it for the winner next week. He says no one here wants or deserves to see you naked. Rohit chimes in and says, you want to see her naked? And he slaps Rohit. I-, I got a good laugh of that. We get Scott Steiner coming out. 
He says, you know, the Desi Hit Squad ruined basically Scarlet getting naked for everyone. He beats the Hit Squad up. Steiner gets up, sets up the chair. He sits down. Scarlet basically gives him a lap dance and she leaves. Um, so I, I don't know if I would consider this very edgy. It was pretty tame, to be honest. But I guess for this day and age, this is considered edgy. Well, I'll add two parts and I'll get on to that. I think the first one would kind of had me going. I mean, you know, Steiner, I, I thought <laughs> I was surprised to see him actually uh, doing moves because I thought he would just get some clotheslines in with it, given his advanced age. Yeah. He did his belly to belly. Then, you know, when he was doing the double Steiner recliner, <laughs> I don't know if it was just it more had much more to do with the fact that you're trying to apply it to two people or the fact that he just because <laughs> it looked like he was leaning over a little bit. Mm. Like he couldn't hold them, hold them together. But I mean, given his age and whatnot, um, as far as with the the semi T strip show or whatever we you know we got, I don't have a problem with it. But I just kind of just wonder, given the climate that we're in now in wrestling, and you know how everyone's you know riding the women's wrestling train, which. I mean, I I feel it's always been around. I think just now certain organizations are paying more attention to it. I mean, that was never a problem in Impact. Impact had always showcased the knockouts and a highlight. But I just kind of just wonder, is it going to be well received by the audience that they're trying to not only, um, you know, garnish, but, you know, expand as well? And I think that would just be the key. And obviously, is Scarlett okay with it? I mean... I'm sure she signed off on it, but, you know, the one minor worry I have is if she ever were to leave, you know, and say she does go to AEW. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Here we go. <laughs> it, it cut some shoot promo talking about how, you know, Impact had her doing this and that. You already know people are going to look would look at Impact in a negative light. And just lastly, too, I think the thing with her, what I don't get is why don't they have her wrestle? I mean, they've had her wrestle on Explosion before. I could see if she was somebody who didn't have wrestling experience and she was always a valet, but I don't understand why they don't have her have her wrestle. I mean, she could add something new to the knockouts. Yeah, but I mean, you know, this could be her going full heel, like you said, just comes down and she says, you know, she is going to be the winner. And that's when she debuts as a wrestler. I don't know. Could be a way to go about it, but um, yeah, with the Desi Hit Squad, man, it just I think it's time to pull the plug. Um, you could have just had honestly Gama be the manager for uh, Raj Singh, could have just done something simple like that. I think that's would be a route to go. And like you said, Ro, he, he would definitely fit in the X division. He seems like he's grown more as a competitor, um, even a character since then, since he's had some good uh good interactions with gamma so i think they could potentially have something there with them yeah i i feel like where they missed missed their the ball with them where it was it looked like they were going to be primed for to be uh, lax's next you know pretty much threat to the tag titles you know we get the one match and then that was it you know i thought could have given us a, a mini feud out of it you know regardless what happens but yeah, that was, that was that was a thing, and then you know now as of late they've been so linked to to Scarlet. I almost called her Charlotte for some reason, <laughs> and uh, and you know I can't buy Scarlet managing them. No, no. I mean, they, I would have understood if because originally this was uh, teased as like a multi man. You know, I think four four or five people that were going to be originally in the hit squad, and then it's just two guys and a manager, and then you swap one guy out with another guy, they could have just went with the strength and numbers thing. You know, I think that would have benefited them. You could, They could have built victories that way. Yeah, that's one the one thing that I feel Impact's kind of missing. We don't really have, and I know some people hate that sometimes because when you have those stables, you know, they're always winning, and, you know, it takes forever to get a payoff. But I, I wouldn't mind that. I'd actually welcome that if we had a stable you know, four or five people, and you know they you, always using the numbers game, and then finally we get somebody to kind of, you know, get their comeuppance. I mean, the stables we get that are you know three people, a lot of times they lose more than they win anyway. So, <laughs> well, I mean, OV kind of did that, and you kind of had Cage run through all three of them. Yeah, but it was mainly if you think about it with with with, with OVE, it was mainly just Callahan and then the rest of them in the background. A lot of times they served as well. Jake especially served as a lackey. You know, mm -hmm. you're feuding with Sammy. Oh, you're gonna face Jake. You run through Jake, then you finally get to Sammy. 
Yeah. I wonder if there's any legs with the OVLAX thing. I mean, it's been, what, a year since they ended their feud, right? Didn't they have the barbed wire massacre last year in January? Yeah, and I mean, at least, too, with OVE, where you can buy it, is they've defeated LAX before for the tag titles. Right. So I think this is one of these matches like, oh, well, you know, the outcome of this, should OVE win, should have some implications, you know, in the title picture. Well, I mean, at least one could believe that. Yeah. Um, We had Matt Seidel. He had apparently gotten injured, so he probably won't be around for a little while, and that kind of hurts another tag team you could have potentially had with him and Ethan Page, so... And it seems like Rich and Willie are kind of doing their own thing, so they're pretty limited at the time with tag teams. I mean, you got the Rascals, too, but I think that's the thing. It's not so much... They they got plenty of tag teams, but you have to make them credible of enough threats to challenge LAX. Uh, and I think that's the thing where what, what happens, where it's like you get somebody challenge and they lose, and then, okay, who's next? I think sometimes, you know, have even if it's a couple matches, you know, get yeah. a couple matches out. But, um, yeah. Too many I, I one-offs think, is what you're saying. Yeah, you know, because even, too, where I was surprised, I was actually surprised, was I thought we were going to kind of get something where the Lucha Brothers were going to challenge them one more time in Mexico. You know, now... We don't know. Maybe it could happen at the Mexico tapings, but you know, sometimes when they're going to a different uh, city or out of this case, out the country, we'll see some big challenge, and that'll kind of be like the headliner for that set of tapings. So, but um, yeah, I mean, who we'll we'll see who's next as far as uh, next contenders to challenge LAX. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, then we see Gail with her post homecoming response. She says. Tessa put her hands on her, and now this is the price she has to pay. Then we have Tessa versus Kaylee Collins. It's basically a squash match. Tessa goes for the buzzsaw. Then she decides to use Gail's finisher, the eat defeat. So obviously we know the direction they're going here. It's probably just going to be a little bit to build over time. You would think, right? Yeah, but, you know, the thing that just well, I don't get, they could have gotten this. We're going a totally different route, just my opinion. I felt the way because we all knew the moment that Gail was inserted into the to as to be special guest referee for the matchup against Taya at homecoming, like we kind of knew where they were going. And I, I, I mean, in um, I know you've already reviewed it. If I could just touch, I think that was the one match I didn't like just because. You really you had the the referee pretty much um, give the outcome of the match. You know, normally we see when spe- you know when referees, special guest referees, you know maybe you know they do like a push to the wrestler, wrestler, and then the person they're facing kind of capitalizes on it and gets a you know as a fast count. But she literally attacked <laughs> Tessa and then Oliver tired uh, you know attack yeah. as well. You know, so she helped in the outcome. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know. And then I, I just find myself wondering, do, does Tessa really benefit from beating Gail Kim? I think Tessa's established herself enough in Impact where I think beating Gail Kim isn't going to give her that big of a rub. But, I mean, I think maybe this is just kind of a detour because I do think Tessa's getting the knockouts title back, not if, just a matter of when. And maybe it's just going to take her annihilating uh, Gail Kim to get back to that point. But That's true. But I mean, like like I had said in my review, at least the knockouts championship isn't involved in this feud between the two of them. I, I mean, I agree. I think this overshadowed uh, Taya's big victory win. You know, she's a first time champion. It's not like she won the belt a handful of times before and it wasn't a big deal for her to win the title. So that, I didn't really care for that. Yeah. And like I said, I guess that's a big picture. You, you get the title off of uh, um, Tessa switching so feud with Gail. But then, too, I guess. And, and I know with wrestling, you know, a lot of stuff's not supposed to make sense. But, you know, Tessa does have an argument like, hey, I got screwed out of the title because she did get screwed out of the title. Right. But but I guess that's something that they could re- revisit after she runs through Gail Kim, which I'm praying that she does. There should be no reason why <laughs> Gail Kim should be beating her. But, you know, no Madison things Rain have happened. 2.0. Huh? No Madison Rain 2.0. Oh man, I'm still <laughs> I'm still wondering how did uh uh um Sue Young beat a Madison Rain benefit Sue Young. I'm still yeah. trying to find that <laughs> a just year to later. drop it to Tessa. 
<laughs> yeah. But. So up next, we have McKenzie interviewing Eddie Edwards about his match with Moose. Eddie says it's over with Moose. Him and Kenny are ready to move on. Eli Drake walks up. He asks Eddie if he really wants to be the one to carry the torch from uh, for hardcore wrestling from people like Tommy Dreamer and Abyss. So did you watch the Night of the Dummies one night only back in August? Nah, unfortunately yeah. I didn't. So Eli Drake and Eddie main evented that show and... Uh, Eddie was, you know, on his full blown crazy stage. And Eli, basically, since he was running the show, he got to dictate all the rules that happened. So every time Eddie did something, Eli would say if he did it again, it was a disqualification. And just what they did together, they it was just so good and translated so well. Um, I was actually very pleased to see that these two will actually be having a feud going forward. Yeah, you know, I thought this was an interesting uh, segue because, you know, I think coming out of homecoming, you know, what you wondered what was next for Eddie and then what was next for Eli. And with Eli now being the uh, hardcore killer. <laughs> yeah, the hardcore killer. I mean, <laughs> and I guess Eddie, we've seen Eddie kind of change into, uh, I guess you would say modern day hardcore yeah. guy. Um you know that'd be next and th- this should be good i mean i think they can get a couple matches out of there but i think after that i'm i'm hoping that both these guys we can see them you know integrated back into whether it's the main event scene for eli or eddie or hell i wouldn't even mind eddie back in the x division too so yeah no no i think this was the right direction to go like you said you know uh eddie has kind of been that hardcore guy eli taking him out next is it really makes sense. I think Impact did a good job with this right here. So uh, hopefully this will elevate both men up to the main event again, like you said. Um, but yeah, no, this is uh, better for Eli than uh, Abyss again. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. And then we have uh, Sue and Allie backstage. Uh, Allie says she left that bunny and she came back for that bunny. But that bunny is gone. She told she sold that bunny to him. Allie says she doesn't need the shadow. We hear a noise, and then we notice writing on the coffin that says, one more chance, rejoin the shadow, Rosemary. So we know this was going forward. Um, you know, I kind of hope they go all in with this. It seems like a pretty big draw to people, and uh, I've liked what they've done so far. Um, adding Rosemary back into the situation only makes things that much more interesting. Uh, what, do you, what do you think here? Yeah, just so many. I think there's so many routes that can go. I just would just hope that Sue Young doesn't get lost because I just feel like, you know, ever since she lost the title, she's really kind of been in the background of a lot of things. And I think while there's obviously the big money is the Alley versus Rosemary, I still want to see Ali. I mean, not Ali. I'm sorry, Sue Young versus uh, Rosemary as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that'll be something they could, you know keep off to like slam anniversary. I mean, like they have such a fantastic women's roster. I mean, if we got, you know, Jordan Grace versus Tessa, or like you said, Rosemary versus Sue, those would be two huge money matchups that they could definitely utilize a pay-per-view for. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then we get an update next week. We will get dark alley versus Jordan grace, uh, rich Swan versus Trey and LAX versus OVE. So, you know, half the show for next week, basically. And, uh, then we have our main event killer cross versus Johnny impact. No disqualification. What'd you think of this match? Yeah, I like this. Um, you know, for one, I want to say what killer cross is a tire. I don't know if he just wore it for this particular match, but if he's going to continue to wear this moving forward, I like this. I think it really kind of adds to his uh, badassery. <laughs> that's a, a word that I could use to describe him. Yeah, that's that's a fair word. But I think him getting a win now, in, I feel like it validated in a sense for me that you know he's in the picture as well so it would just it would make the most sense to have some sort of three way for the impact world championship you know down the road but then too it wouldn't surprise me if they did killer cross versus brian cage for you know number one contendership too even though i know um they announced earlier that uh, we we would get brian cage and johnny impact well johnny impact was telling brian cage i'll give you a rematch but i i really think Killer Cross getting this win is going to help him, you know, put him in that uh, title picture. 
Right. And I mean, I think Killer Cross just getting the victory over Johnny says, you know, I deserve a title shot too, which they could lead to the triple threat match. But I think even with this match, just we got to see a different side of Johnny Impact that, you know, we haven't really seen. I mean, for the most part, he's kind of been that de facto face. Um, so they're kind of just building more uh, character work for him. And, uh, you know, I liked what I saw. We saw some aggression from him. Uh, but they did some good things in this match with the, uh, I really like the spot where, uh, Johnny did a moonsault from the stairs onto Cross, who was underneath the stack of chairs. And then Johnny's throwing the chairs into the ring, and Cross gets up from I'm out, out from underneath all the chairs, and he's just kind of staring at him. They're both tossing the, the chairs in the ring, just, you know, cementing Cross as that crazy guy. Yeah, I know that, that was a nice that was a nice uh, 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 sequence of things, chain of events, I should say. When yeah, he's throwing the chairs and he's, he's just uh, you just see him just uh, nodding in approval. Um, you know, I thought it was cool. You know, they had Moose come out, and I and I guess from Moose interference, you know, I guess so they you know they still kind of have that partnership. And I know you know we you had talked offline. Maybe they'll go a fatal four way route. Um, I think if they were to do that then they'd probably be inclined to put keep the belt on Johnny. But I think with the triple threat, you know, if, should they decide to go that route, we're going to get a new champion. Yeah, no, that's that's a fair point. But um, it, it is interesting that Moose did insert himself. I think what was Johnny going for some sort of move off the top rope while Cross was under chairs again inside the ring. Moose comes out, pushes Johnny off the top rope through a table on the outside that was set up earlier. Johnny gets, I think, thrown back in the ring and then cross pa- makes him pass out from the cross jacket. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they utilize Moose in this or he's just kind of there to add extra, I guess, um, aggression for Cross, you know, the extra person to beat the crap out of Johnny and Cage. So I'd assume we'll probably get a tag match between these four men. They like to do things like that. <laughs> or, or we'll probably get some random one-on-one too who knows <laughs> yeah that's possible as well you end up getting like cage versus i don't know maybe they did like cage versus moose <laughs> why cage had nothing to do with this but <laughs> yeah that was a good match though when they put the two of them together oh no definitely no doubt you know i, I know i'm cracking jokes but no i mean they you know moose i think since he's turned heel you know he's really done some great some great work yeah, no, absolutely, and I think that really turned a you know page for him in his uh, career in Impact Wrestling because you know he kind of he was just kind of not bland. I don't want to say, but they really didn't know where they were going with him, and then he kind of owned this character and just kind of came into his own basically. I think it was a product of too, and like I said, even though and I don't you know, stand on the island, I wouldn't have had a problem had they done the a Moose title run when he when he after at Slammiversary last year um but I think it was just a product of you had so many people leaving during that time so it kind of pushed him up mm-hmm. because you think about when you had EC3 and then I think I'm trying, I can't think of who, whoever else but you had all these uh faces and I think out of all the faces he might have been like number five in the right. pecking order so then you have those guys leave and it you know it kind of rushed him a little bit you know you maybe if those guys were still around and he had more time i think we could have gotten that face run but i think he's found a role and i think whenever they do decide to pull the trigger on his, him and you know give him a shot with the title i think he's gonna thrive yeah no 100 percent agree um overall yeah i thought this was a really strong show to uh come out of homecoming with um, it'll be interesting. We have one more show from the Nashville tapings, and then we head to Mexico. So uh, I wonder if we're going to utilize a lot of uh, talent from AAA again. I know there were a few names that were slated to be on the show, but um, I'd like to see them bring some stars back with them from Mexico. Yeah, I thought, you know, for this, and like I, I dubbed it the season premiere since it's a new channel and everything. You know, I thought this was a nice episode. I mean, from top to bottom, there's really nothing. I mean, yeah, we can always nitpick here and there, but there was nothing where it was like, oh, God, that brought the show down. You know, anytime I can walk away from watching the episode of Impact, it was like, damn, that was good. You know, can't wait till next week. I mean, I think that's, you know, the vibe that they, you know, want all fans to, to have. So they did, you know, they did well. Um, I'm in agreement with you. Hopefully they can bring some people back from Mexico. 
Um, you know, and just to be able to help fill in in certain divisions, I, I'd really like to see the knockouts division have a little bit more, you know, that way at least it ain't even has to be so much star power, but we always talk about it in order to elevate some of these people, they got to beat someone. Someone has to take a pin, you know, same thing with the X division. You know, I think, I think, uh, um, you know, bring a lot, some people to work some of the tapings, you know, to help aid in that aspect as well. But yeah, overall top to bottom, great show. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, good start on the Pursuit Network. I wonder if we're going to see any viewership numbers from them. Probably won't get those till about Tuesday, I would assume. But, uh, yeah, we are hitting about 50 minutes now. Um, I enjoyed having you on again, man. I really enjoy talking Impact with you. Uh, so we may make this a uh, weekly thing. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me, and just to let – People know um, the Adam and Rose show, as I'm sure you guys know, part of the Impact Lounge. Um, we should be having something coming up, if not this weekend, next weekend. Um, a lot of times we just, you know, try to get away from the actual review and just kind of share our thoughts. So we really haven't been having anything as of yet, but uh, just stay tuned. We should be back in business shortly. All right. Good to hear. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners podcast.